Sophie, his 13th birthday. Gift, we've got you. Guitar, coming tomorrow. Road game today, surprise party tomorrow. Uh, change of plans. Game tomorrow. No, birthday tomorrow. Hotel, hotel. Guitar, reroute. Birthdays are on birthdays. Party, relocate. UPS My Choice makes rerouting packages easy. Wow. How we're helping companies solve for the needs of customers like Sophie. All right, welcome to Coach Bowden's weekly press conference. This week, Akron opens the Mid American Conference season at Bowling Green on Saturday, September 30th. Kickoff is at 6 p.m. at Doit Perry Stadium. Coach, you want to start with the opening? Statement? Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to, to um, getting into the MAC conference. Um, players have uh, had a good Monday and Tuesday practice, uh, and they seem to have uh, know the the excitement of getting into the conference. We've had two two tough losses against two two very good football teams, as far as Iowa State losing to Iowa State, uh, and the kids played very hard. Players played very hard in that game. And then last week against uh, Troy, who had won their first ten win season in their school history as a Division One team, and uh, uh, coming off a bowl victory last year, we played them and. They scored in the last minute to beat us there as we were winning 17 to 16. So, you know, it was two tough losses against two two good football teams, uh, and uh, I thought our players uh, showed a lot of uh, uh, very very played very very hard. We we can we we have to continue to get better, uh, but we look forward to it. We look forward to getting to the conference and uh, take the next one on. And so uh, we'll just open up for questions and go from there. Did you see a lot of? Uh even though it was a loss, 90 mm -hmm. some yards drive to, for them to win it. But it seemed just reading the play by play and seeing some of the clips, mm -hmm. you were gaining momentum as, you, as the game went along before you took took your first lead. If you look at, at Troy, and we, we know the coaches there and their style, they have they, they, they play a pretty fast-paced, upbeat style. And and if they're going to score these the first drive, if you can get out of there without much happening the first drive or two. They got up 14 to 16 to 3 right. in the first quarter. And after that, we had the ball nine and a half minutes, second quarter, nine and a half, thir third quarter, about 10 to fourth quarter. And we dominated statistically the entire rest of the game, offensively and defensively. But we had, we had squandered. We got to the red zone several times came up with a missed field goal a fumble from the quarterback just throwing the ball and dropping it to an interception ill-advised throw in the end zone uh, so now you're coming out of the end zone with nothing um, now if you just have three points out of that then you're leading by four at the last drive and now you're probably playing them a lot looser because you're going to give up they have no timeouts left you can give up a lot of passes underneath but going to that last trust so it all goes together and so but as you look at it it was a team that, that was a very good team and they have a very very uh they have a great home field a atmosphere very good but we came down in a very hot night and other than the uh we got behind but came back and uh, as far as the way we played offensively and defensively we came back and uh uh did everything but win the game and so uh go ahead what's the reason for the breakdown on that final track normally you got somebody pinned well, yards. well, like I said, we had a fourth and five, and, and they made it. We had two near sacks, they made it. That's that's what happened. They just made plays. And like I said, when you're, it wasn't they didn't have to drive 97. They just had to drive third. They have to drive down, kick a field goal, win the game. So what happens is you're having to play a little tighter in those situations, and that's why you let the guy gets behind you for a touchdown because you're trying them not to get a. Uh, um, try not to get a, into field goal range to kick the field goal to win the game. Um, Needless to say, what happened? You missed. You had them on fourth and five, and they made a catch on fourth and five. They made a couple. We missed two interceptions that were right there in our hands that could have ended the game. And uh, and before that drive, George, we had a third and two. If we make the third and two, the game's over because they have no, they don't have time to stop the clock. So offensively, we didn't make the third and two. And then offensively, we got the ball back with 106 left, and we threw a pick on a first and ten. And uh, so those were mistakes as well. So the drive, yes, the drive. You, you'd like to you like to think 97 yards because defense dominates for th for the last three quarters, but they won the game because they had they dominated the last drive. As you look at it, they, we just we had we had an opportunity to make the play to win the game, and we did not make the play. They made the play to win the game. We did not make the play to win the game. And when you're going when you're going to play teams like Troy at their place with their record and uh, and and the and the six year quarterback that they had. You're going to you, you better make plays one more than they did. You said defense played tight. Do you mean conservative? You mean the last? No, no, no. They, no, you played up tight. Yeah, because you got to guard them tight. That's why they. That's yeah. They played. They played them. They played them tight. So you so you couldn't get a field goal, and they threw it over our heads for a touchdown. 
That's what that's what killed you. It's like uh, who'd we see Tennessee and somebody the other day get beat with throwing a touchdown pass the last play of the game. Or, yeah. But 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 if you if you if you make your uh, field goal down there in the goal line, if you make it, you're up four, and now you, with with no timeouts, you're you're wanting them to catch the ball inside. You're wanting them to catch it underneath you, and that doesn't that that's not as an excuse. That's we didn't get the ball done in the red zone offensively to put us in a position. Well, we could have put more points. We, we, we left a lot of points on the board earlier uh, in the red zone as we looked at that area to do. But bottom line is when they got to their one minute, their quarterback did a great job of taking them down the field, and uh, they made one more play than we did. Would you say you should have won that game? Uh, do we, want, we, should, we should have won the Iowa State game. I want to win both of them. <laughs> But I don't know the the, 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 the the people who bet on games said we were seventeen point underdogs, George. Yeah, I don't know if you put that up there. They said we were seventeen point underdogs, but I don't know. Does that mean anything? I don't know. I don't either. I just I don't know what people say, boy, the line's against you this week. I don't have any idea what makes a line a line. But uh, that's what it was. We you know our kids played hard. We expect to win that game. We expect to go to Troy. I've coached to Troy. I know the people at Troy, a good football team. They beat Ohio in the bowl game last year. That won our division last year. They won that bowl game against Ohio. But we went down there expecting to win the game, and it played out like we thought it might play out. Let's, they're going to bid. They're going to get you early, as you watch their tempo and their speeds. Their, their, their hit screens on the outside, and you, and you get that once you get that down. And uh, it was kind of falling into place. You know, we ran physical against them. We physically ran physical against them. We just had some turnovers, so we didn't we didn't play as well as we need to play to beat a team like that at their home field. We didn't play as well as we needed to play. You you mentioned running physically. Mm -hmm. No, you said last week that mm -hmm. you needed to stick with the run. Mm -hmm. Was it heartening to see that even though there were times they were right. stopping the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. stopping more that that part of your game worked? Yeah, I, th I think that was the reason we had the ball nine and a half minutes. Is that we? That's why those red zone uh, opportunities that we that we passed, we missed on, were so de was so ne detrimental to our success. When you drive the ball and take all that time off the clock twice in the last minutes of the first half, we're down there twice. Kicking the second, first time we uh, quarterback for whatever reason they, he he's got, he got a blitz, it got clean, and as he's backing up, he, he's trying to throw it out of the back of the end zone, and it doesn't get out the back. Well, he's Tom. Tom. He knew what he did as soon as he threw it. The second, and, and then the ball slipped out of his hands. He's throwing a football, and it's the, 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 with the sweat and the purse because it was a hot night. He slipped out and it's a fumble. And then um, the other one was just as, as time ended in the first half. It was a 34-yard field goal or 35. So it wasn't very far. It was a 30-something yard field goal we missed. And all those come back to haunt you as you as you can as you come out the second half and play like we did. So you got to go to get to beat Troy. And I would th for us to beat Troy. We got to go in there. And don't don't turn the ball over. And take and, and don't and, and make sure we take advantage of the uh, of the uh, of our opportunities in the red zone. We had been pretty good at red zone opportunities before. Coach, last week we uh -huh. talked about the definition of horse collar. Yeah. This week, the definition of intentional grounding coming out of the end zone. Did you get an explanation on that? No, you know they didn't. And I'm surprised because I got their their rulings on all the plays, and I, I don't understand how you can have your back to the field. And throw the ball over your head out of the. Uh, to me, it's the definition of intentional grounding. Now, was there a player on that side of the field? There might have been, but he sure wasn't looking at him. And if the ball came down, it, it came down way out of bounds, and it wasn't it wasn't thrown with the intent of completing anything. It didn't make it back to the line of scrimmage. I thought it did. Well, did did no, it not? I I, they would have had to call it then, I think, wouldn't they? Well, no, no. I guess if there was a guy on the flat, they wouldn't have had to call it. As far back as he had to run. I don't. I don't understand. But I, you know, I didn't. You know, again, when you look at that, you say, God, golly, I, I thought you, you put a great rush on a guy, and, he, and he's about to get. And that would have been a two-point kickoff to us. And I was, and I didn't get an explanation for it. But like I say, um, and, and I'm sure there there is one that we just it's like horse collar last week, and uh, there there's there's an explanation of of the rule that I just don't understand. This year, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're going to play Bowling Green this uh -huh. weekend. Kind of similar situation in that they didn't, they weren't, the record said they weren't very good last year. Uh -huh. And you guys had a letdown again. Well, you know, George, I don't think we had a letdown. If you remember, we, we Tommy Woodson was was went through the pregame warm up, and after one snap, he couldn't play. Second, then we put Chad, uh, we put our backup quarterback Trayvon Chapman. He got a head injury and had to leave. We had to go. At, we had to find a receiver that played in high school, and we played the receiver at quarterback. At that point, we fumbled a handoff, and it went about 70 yards for a touchdown, plus the interception. But he did throw two with a with a run, with a wide receiver playing quarterback. He threw two touchdown passes to tie the game at 28 apiece. Uh, and we really didn't have a whole lot of things we could do at that point. And so, uh, um, 
it, the, the, under the circumstance, we like that, that. That was the that was a tough loss, no question. But I don't think that the guys didn't let down. We just we just ran out of we we got into a situation we could not overcome. I don't make excuses. We just got beat. We should have had a third quarter. We could have pulled our red shirt off of uh, our freshman, or we should have had more quarterbacks. You know. Point being, how do you impress upon them that mm -hmm. it's important, <laughs> given? Or do you have to impress them? I, I don't think so, George. I mean, gosh, it's their first conference game. You know, we've we've uh, they're zero and four. I think this one's probably pretty dang important to them, and it sure as heck is important to us because every conference game they're an Eastern Division team. They're in our Eastern Division. Akron hasn't beaten them in eight years. They were they, they were the conference champions two or three times when I got here. So this this has been the premier team in our division. Of all the teams in our division, Bowling Green has been the premier team in our division since I've been at Akron. And so um, this one's an important game for us. We know that because, um, um, you know, um, we, we, we'd like to have you, – you come out of your preseason, okay, you want to win all your pre-conference pre games. Uh, but they, they, lined up, they lined up the way they did, and we got one of them, and we lost two pretty, pretty good battles. And so you can't let it get you down. You just got to do this, but this one, this one, our kids, our kids want to win. They want to win real bad, and and, uh, and I'm sure they'll get our best. They'll get these players' best effort. What do they do well with Bowling Green? Uh, uh, Bowling Green's played a tough schedule too. I mean, I mean, you look at Bowling Green. I'm not sure how many teams in our conference would come out. That, although they played a what a one double A team. That's a very, very, very good one double A team. South South Dakota. They they've lost to Northwestern, uh, Michigan State. And uh, Middle, Middle Tennessee, which is a which is a which is a very very good team, and um, and they lost to South Dakota, uh, and they're playing a true freshman. So they have they've got a running back that's been consistently good. They've got uh, uh, a quarterback that they've they've gone with the red, the true freshman, the first true freshman they've started in 35 years at that school. JG, how do you? It's a Deji. Deji. Deji is name. It's one of those names you got to look at the pronunciation guide to say a Deji. Deji, but he's a he's a he, they they moved him ahead of the uh, the uh, starter, and started him last week. He got incredible experience. Got great experience last week. They've got a couple of linebackers, 27, 19. I go by numbers because that's all I do is watch video that are pretty daggum good and they make a lot of plays. So this team is, is only two years removed from winning a conference, you know. And, um, and so they still play with a lot of good football players and, and they're, I'm sure, still trying. Mike Jinks is still trying to get his philosophy and his people doing the things the way he wants it done. Big game for both of us. Are they doing the, the Texas Tech thing? They, you know, I, I don't know anybody. <laughs> I'm not sure what the Texas Tech thing is anymore. Well, yeah, well, but 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 uh, but but Mike yeah. come yeah. Mike comes yeah. from that, you know. Uh -huh. He comes from Texas Tech, just like the head the head coach at at Troy. He was the office coordinator right. at Texas. They're both Texas Tech, right. you know. Which is you see it when you see that that that, that slip screen outside that that sh that pass to the outside receivers. That doing that very fast and a lot of a lot of get the ball in your hands and throw it fast is is quick. But I think the the fact that the Texas Tech style. Of playing fast is so common now, it's even even the Texas Tech style has changed a little bit, you know. And um, um, but he's uh, but he's got his tech. He has a Texas background and some Texas Tech background. And uh, um, but they still they 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 played very good opponents. I think I think our team can clearly see who they play and how they play, and know that they have had a schedule very similar to ours. And uh, um, and so they, they are a very, very, very good 0-4 uh, team. And like I said, both of us see this as our first conference game. Please. Go ahead, George. Mm -hmm. What's different about Quadarius Smith this year? Quad, well, he didn't play a whole lot last year because he was behind. We had JoJo getting those plays that are – a lot of the plays that are going to him went to JoJo Natson, you know. So he's just – you know, we're just and – he's, and he's not uh, – JoJo was so much further along than than Quad when he came into college as a player. Quadarius has really come along, but it, like I say, he's just he's he's got, got very good speed, and he and so you you got a chance to run us. You see, if you run a really good go, you got a good chance to get a stop. <laughs> if you, as far as pass routes go, if people get fair, afraid of your go, then they're going to give you a stop. So those get those two of them down, then you get everything else. But he's been a nice addition to our, our group. Wolf was back for really the first game he's been able to play since this year. He caught he led us with six passes for 70 yards or seven for 60. I don't know. Six, wasn't it? Six passes. He was a leading receiver. And uh, um, and so and then, you know, uh, Trevon has continued to make some big third down catches for us. 
And so uh, a, a real bright spot for our offense has been our third down per, uh, a completion percentage. Third down uh, percentage has been been extraordinarily high. Uh, we just played some really good football teams and uh, um, where you um, made some big third down play. <laughs> play. Well, unfortunately, you're in third down a lot when you're playing good people. It's, some, it's nice that you have a good percentage, but it doesn't really, uh, you really have, like to have a lot of good first down percentage plays that are good. Uh, but that's, that's, a, that's a really good stat is, is what we've done there. What did you do on the Alabama trip? What did we? Extraneous to football. Oh, we had the best time. I, mean, I thought it was one of the greatest experiences that our players wanted to go. But being in Montgomery and me being from Alabama and knowing the history, especially in regard to civil rights and the civil rights movement, and had the important part that the city of Montgomery, Selma, and some of those areas played. I knew enough about that area that we 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 had a trip for our players. First, we went uh, as soon as we got there. We didn't have enough time to. I'd like to have gone to Selma, uh, but we were able to go to Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, which is now called Dexter King Church, because that's that was the church of Martin Luther King when, during 54 through 60, uh, during the time where they had the bus boycott. He he organized it from the basement of that church. That was his pulpit, and so we were able to take our team over there, and they uh, we got a, a, a tour guide that knew how to give a tour. And they were able to tour that church and, and sit in his desk and his chair at his pu at his pulpit, uh, the actual ones that he was he used, uh, and then hear the history. And then right around the corner was the Civil Rights Memorial, uh, where we all got to go and uh, where the, where it recognized the the 41 people who gave their life during the early years of the uh, Civil Rights Movement, uh, who were killed or, or somewhat missing. And uh, it honored those people, and I think the players were really, um, really, really uh, um, had a moving experience for them. That's you know, back when I was growing up, going to games, if we played Boston College, we'd go to the USS Constitution, or we'd have lobster soup, or we go to we played William and Mary, we go to Jamestown. That was what you always did. Now we're so seem to be so tied up in 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 our in our schedule, we don't. So I think that was that was something. I don't think our, a lot of our players will never make it back to Alabama, and they that was a lot of their heritage. Uh, of our of our history goes back down there, so it was a it was a, a good hour and a half uh, on Friday, and uh, uh, and I'm, I'm glad that our players got to do that. Coach, you went to that uh, double tight end. Were you satisfied with what you got? Yeah, you know, we, we, we found we were trying to find a way to run the football and just no matter what they did, you know, you if you just don't use one tight end or none, you you can run it if you want to, but you can't. You're gonna have a lot of unblocked people. And so, uh, but when you put two tight ends, you got seven blockers, and if, if they only if they put eight up there, that's only one. <laughs> if you don't block the furthest one away, you got seven blocked, and so it allowed us to put a hat on our body. He can usually break a tackle, and so that that ended up being a, a formation that was working for us. It's also one they probably didn't work on as much, and but we were able to hammer and hammer, and uh, and control that clock, keep our defense off the field. And uh, and move the ball down the field, put ourselves in scoring position. You know, now that's not always the best situation, you know, to be in, but to be at that wadded up together. But for this game, that that was important. But that that seemed to work for us. And uh, Kobe Booker, our freshman tight end, who's about 265 pounds, along with Newman Williams, who's 258 pounds. They're both not that tall. They don't look like your Big Ten tight ends, but they are bigger than most tight ends, and they're very, very, uh, they're very, they're very good blockers. So they were able to, to, to work off the edges and, and put a hat on people. We were, we were able to put a hat on people, and that helped us in the running game. It was tough yardage. He rushed 28 times for 112 yards, and that there then I think his longest was 19 yards. So you know you'd, you'd like to get a 50. You get 150 or 175. All of a sudden you got the great numbers. But I thought as far as us getting first downs and running the football against a team that that uh, was trying to stop us, that was one of the things that we we hoped would be able to do. Is that guys are still dealing with a concussion? Yeah, he is. Now he's making progress, but he is still dealing with his concussion. I think that'll be. He, he remember he got knocked out cold, and so when you, it's kind of like he just needs to come along at his own pace. He was he was there. He was kind of our honorary cat. He was one of our captains that walked out. But right now he's getting. He's got to uh, pass all the protocol, which you have your testing, which is which is is a set standard protocol that you have to follow through. But. At some point, he'll he'll get he'll get over that because it ended up being a a, a, a concussion that uh, we have several players that have gone through that this week and um, we you know Deontay Moore and Darius Copeland both did not play because they had concussion protocol for practice you know and uh, and um, that was just that just came out of practice last week 
so they didn't they didn't they weren't able to dress and play so you know we we have I will say this I think I think college football is doing an incredible incredible job having coached a lot of years been a head coach for 24 our ability our, our medical people and their and their uh, and the way they uh, protect these players we do a great job at their so they they do a lot of uh, the protocol is very extensive uh, and they don't I don't think they miss much if it's close they have proper testing and we and we keep those guys from contact and um, and are able to make sure that uh, the players are no way that, uh, uh, out there with a concussion or something near a concussion so we we we, uh, we we really watch that closely as all college teams are doing now coach you got pretty good depth because you look like Featherstone and yeah, Featherstone had 11 tackles. He was our leading tackle because with Alvin Davis being ejected from the previous game for a targeting penalty, uh, he couldn't play the first half. Uh, and with guys are out, we were able to uh, – Featherstone is our third safety who plays a lot. Jordan George was our starting safety last year. He tore his shoulder up and we had to start playing Alvin Davis. So we had two pretty veteran safeties in. and uh, But they played well. Featherstone, like I say, 11 tackles. J Jordan may have been a seven, may have been our bat next highest total was Jordan George. But with uh, Darian Daly and uh, Kyron Brown at cornerback, along with Denzel Butler, we, were, we, had a, we had enough numbers to get in there, you know. He seems like he's been progressing nicely in the secondary. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he took some chances. He got he, he got beat on that last pass. And I, I'm a big Daly fan. He's really come along, worked hard, but they threw a deep ball on him. He's so talented and so fast. He sometimes will let a guy run by him and catch up with him. And uh, um, that, doesn't, that sounds crazy, and it is crazy if you ask me. But he's, he's four three something. But t late the game, they missed a field goal on the one deep ball on him right. where he did catch up with the almost break it down. And the other deep ball that they scored on, he got behind him on that one too. But he has played very well. And Kyron Brown, though, has been the best corner, I think, uh, for us this year. Around the league, though, I know we, we mm -hmm. focus on acting. But last week, the, with the two conference games, it's a fair, it was surprising to me. Uh, Ohio take Eastern Michigan took Ohio to double overtime mm -hmm. where the Cats won it. I, I covered that mm -hmm. game, but also, Miami went in the Central and pretty much beat up a, a good Central Michigan. Mm -hmm. Are you surprised? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. I didn't. I don't get to watch those games. I do know I have been following Eastern. They've been getting better and better and better and better. So that doesn't shock me that Eastern has gotten themselves in a position. Cause they played some good games toward the end of last year, you know. And and right. my, Miami has ridden a lot of confidence. They get once they got their quarterback situation settled, they have become a very good football team. I did see uh, the 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 game they lost to. Um, Cincinnati. Cincinnati. This just a, I know it just made made them sick, but yeah, and, and I, you know must 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 have made them sick. But no, I think it's going. It's it, the conference is the conference. You know, it, it's going to be it's going to be a wide open conference. I don't know, you know, it's going to be. A, a, and really, unfortunately, when you look at the teams' records and the non conference schedules, sometimes it's just the luck of the draw. Right. You know, if you played Purdue last year, they were getting rid of a coach. If you play them this year, they got the right coach because they're really good, you know. And you can say the same thing about some other teams that are out there, you know, uh, that used to be good that aren't quite as good or they, they were bad and now they're good. And so you you, you kind of, you know, we, we get our conference games, sometimes we schedule 10 years ahead because we're trying to save ourselves a little bit for, the, for this conference. But you get them, you, you get them. I know we played Marshall a couple of years and they were t terrible for – Ten years ago, for about five or six years, they were having a hard. They fired. Then all of a sudden, they find a quarterback. We catch them, and they're they're loaded. They're loaded, you know. And so you really just go out there and play the game. And, and uh, so it'll be. We'll get into our conference now. I guess some of the teams will still have a non-conference game left because they moved. Yeah. Miami has Notre Dame. Yeah, Miami Notre Dame this week. Yeah. 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 Um, well, because you talk about, I mean, and you never know. I said you want a team to get good, have Akron put them on the schedule because. <laughs> Detroit wasn't very good when they went. No, they had they, they they dismissed their coach. Uh, right. Well, they you know when Larry Blake. Now, they, 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 yeah. now they're really good. Well, what happened? They had Larry Blake, who I coached against him when he first started their football. You know, they were Division Two. They were three-time national champions as a Division Two team. I used to watch them play. Rick Rhodes was the head coach. Then Larry left Auburn and went to there and built their program. And I coached against him when they were one double A. Then they got pretty. They were like six straight years the conference champion, the Sun Belt, in his last years. Then the next guy. They went down, right. and then Neil's, Neil Brown's son, he went there last year in his first year and uh, got them back into a, into a top position in that one. So it's, it's a, like I say, 
you know, that you can't really you can't really schedule your way into anything. The old so you can't schedule yourself into success. You go out there and play the best you can. I'm disappointed because we had a chance to beat that team. We went down there with the intention of beating that team, and our players fought so hard to beat them. And uh, uh, um, and just like Iowa State, you know, when Iowa State, you catch, you know, they they, they we're 20 to 14 in, in the six minutes left of the third quarter, and uh, and we we're, we're facing a fourth and three, and we just got to go out there to beat teams like this and to win these. We've got to go out there and just get better and better and, and make make a few more plays. But we're going to have to be a we're going to have to be a team that plays good defense, good offense. Don't turn the ball over. I don't think you're going to see. We're not going to go out there and be a, just a 50 or 60 points, and the defense doesn't have to worry, you know. Or so I think we're going to be a team that tries to play. Run the football, mix it up nicely with the passing game, and the defense plays better and better. Does um, everyone's creatures a habit of football players and mm -hmm. pregame and everything else? So when you're delayed, and at least at first you didn't know when you were going to get out there. If that yeah, that was a. <laughs> if that does anything. I guess you know it's, it's kind of like the old say: the rain falls on both benches, it falls on right. both sides of the field. But that was unusual because you did you got out there and you didn't have time to warm up. Then the word we got back in the locker room is, we'll tell you five minutes before you got five minutes to play the game. I said, well, hold it now, we didn't warm up. I said, that's not very safe. And uh, then all of a sudden, you got your normal routine of the, you, you go out and warm up, you come back in, you hit your fight, you talk about your final points of the game. And now you you don't know what's going to happen. They finally tell you, all right, 15 minutes, we're going out at 15 after. You got 10 minutes to warm up, do not come back in. Right. Well, when do we say our prayer? When do I when do I hit those final points? When do you, now you're you're out there and really and we had to, which part of our pregame warm up is not important because we're not going to allow to have it. We have to have a little part of it. And so, but it was the same for both teams, you know. And so uh, they fumbled the ball the first drive, we get down and kick a field goal. So you can't say that we came out it didn't work for us, it worked for them, you know. But it was it, it's those are that's, but those are uh, those, those can make. We had that happen at Florida at International, my first year here, yeah. and it was a lot longer than that, I think. <laughs> and uh, but that is fairly common. People down south, you wonder why they would ever in the steep south have an indoor facility. Mm -hmm. It's not for bad cold. It's not for cold weather. It's for it's for lightning, because now the protocol for like concussion, the protocol for lightning is if it's within eight, twelve, twenty wow. miles of your stadium and radar picks it up. You know, I, when I began coaching, you, when the when the, you saw the first lightning crack, that's when you got off the field. <laughs> when you could see the lightning bolt hit the ground, you know, you got off the field. Nowadays, we have we have so much better sophistication that you miss. That, that's not uncommon for South for games down south. It's gonna be like a half hour after the last. Yeah, they have to. We do it. We 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 have it. We've had it happen twice yeah. in practice here, but it's not very common up here in Ohio to to get those late afternoon showers and thunderstorms like you do in the south.